going on YouTube? Welcome to the vlog. So join you after some sprints. I did eight sets in total. The track is 80 meters long and I did five full length and then three half lengths, so 40 meters. And before that, I'd ran about a kilometer to warm up plus done all those warm up exercises. It's kind of funny actually, the track's only there because the local school that I went to for a few years has like a sports day in the summer. And I can actually remember being like six, seven, doing an egg and spoon race there, probably failing fantastically. The sprints are really good though, really good workout. It's kind of tough on like your joints and everything. I'm sure I'm gonna be sore tomorrow, which is why I picked Saturday to do it, so I can recover better, have a light day on Sunday. So time to recharge now, We're gonna grab some lunch. All right guys, so we've got a masterpiece of a sandwich for lunch. So we've got oatmeal, wholemeal roll with lightly salted lure pack. We've got some salad, some mature cheddar cheese, some avocado, three slices of pastrami, some of these tomatoes, and then some mayo too. That is gonna be an absolute wedge. Next course, we got some fruit. Next up, we're going for two scoops of the sea salt caramel halo top ice cream. So guys, excuse the glasses, it's kind of bright out here, but what I thought we'd do for today, the main topic for the vlog, is we sit down and have a quick chat. So I was thinking about this earlier in the week, and I thought people might be interested in my kind of biggest look backs, takeaways from what I've learned so far. You know, I've been training nearly seven years now, a while ago when I first started the channel I did like five tips for beginners looking to get into MMA and now I thought I'd just do a little chat on what I wish I'd known from the beginning. So I'm going to do five points in general about training and then five points about fighting. Right, so to get things going, this might sound like an obvious one, but when I first started I was really into the gym, really into physical stuff, so I wanted to kind of be aesthetic, I wanted to lift weights, I wanted to continue to do that as well as martial arts. but Looking back, if I'd invested as much time then as I do now into technique and drilling over the long term, I would have got quicker, I would have got better a lot quicker. So the next point, which is kind of a follow on, is that as you go along and you slowly learn more and more by drilling, by expanding your knowledge, you realize that the more you know, actually the less you know, or at least you have a bit of an epiphany. Because when I first started, I didn't really know anything, to be honest, like comparatively to what I know now, and at the time I thought, oh yeah, I've got this, yeah, I, I, I know, I know like bits and bobs here and there. I thought I was better than I was. And now that I am infinitely better than I was then, I realise how much further now I have to go. So number three for the gym, again, this is kind of an athletic one, is looking back, I thought you had to be powerful, I thought you had to be quick. But in reality, timing and rhythm are more important, both on the mat, wrestling, and doing stand-up. Next up, I wish I'd broken the sport of mixed martial arts down more as a whole, because really, it's like learning to do multiple sports. So rather than just watching MMA fights, just kind of for fun stuff, I try and take it now a lot more like university almost. It's, it's basically studying, right? It's kind of how you apply your learning. So I try and do it from more of a purist perspective now, and I watch individual sports. I still watch MMA, but I a lot more now enjoy studying, not just watching, like actually studying techniques um, from the various sports, so Muay Thai, boxing, Jiu Jitsu and wrestling primarily and then dip into other things here and there, but they're the main four. So final point for the gym guys, I used to think when I first died there was some magical gym and trainer out there, like I like to call it like a unicorn, the grass is greener somewhere else, maybe in America, where else, but I've come to the realisation that a lot of gyms are actually similar. Um, as long as you have good coaches, you'll be fine. I think it's more down to the individual, how they apply the techniques. Obviously, it does help massively if you have a good system in place, training partners, uh, gym members, coaches, everything else. But I think it's so hard to... I Maybe there is someone out there, I don't know, but I'm yet to come across someone that has like the perfect setup for everything, that is, is an expert in every martial art completely. So moving on to fighting first point is going to be losses aren't the end of the world. The sun does come up the next day. When I first started fighting, obviously I'm still an amateur and losses at pro are a lot more important on your record. But as an amateur, when I started fighting, I won my first fight. I was putting so much pressure on myself after that first fight not to lose. Um, it, it, it affects your performance. You're more worried about the loss than actually performing. And in my second fight, I lost and then I realised everything's still the same, nothing nothing is actually that bad, it's all kind of in your head. So the second point I'd say is that nerves are natural in fighting, everyone gets nervous, it might just be to different degrees, there's nothing wrong with being nervous, it's your body's natural kind of 
anxiety in fight or flight mode, adrenaline, and you just gotta kinda use it and enjoy the experience. Number three, I wish I'd known how important it is to be relaxed, especially when you first start. So this is in training and especially though in fighting, but if you can't do it in training, you'll never be able to do it in fighting. You have to be relaxed, punches, takedowns, everything. It saves your energy and energy is very important. You've got to be efficient with your energy. Everything has to come like as a body mechanic movement. You have to be able to snap your punches. You have to be able to shrimp quickly on the ground. You have to be able to stay relaxed when someone's pressuring you against the cage. If you're, if you're tense, then everything's going to be stiff. You're going to get tired quickly and people are going to read what is coming at them like your attack is going to be more obvious. I think breathing can significantly affect this and when you have control of your breath and you can actually take a second in kind of the moments of chaos to control everything then a lot of the time this makes the problems a lot easier to solve. So the final two points are both to do with overthinking. The first one being just fight, rely on your instincts. If you're drilled enough, if you've done it enough in the practice room it will come out. When you hesitate and you don't pull the trigger, that's when things will go wrong. So the final point, guys, is not overestimating opponents and not underestimating them as well. During my career so far, I think at some point I've done both of these. So with underestimating, guys, I think I did this especially early on in my first few fights where I thought oh, I'll, I'll be able to walk through this guy and I kind of had almost unrealistic expectations and it makes you learn the hard way. In terms of overestimating opponents, I think I did this more midway through my amateur career thus far and I built people up a bit more. Because I'd underestimated people early on, then later on just because they were from a certain country or I'd seen a few clips of them online, I thought, oh, they're going to be really good at this thing. And then I didn't allow myself to express myself fully in the cage because I held back certain elements of my game. Whereas now, I think I've found more of a fine line where I respect the opponent. I don't look into them too much, I just kind of get an idea. But I worry more about me and if I'm good enough to beat them, then I can just let my skills go. And if my skills aren't good enough, then it is what it is in the words of Max Holloway. But that being said, obviously it pays dividends to have a high fight IQ and try and take it where the opponent is weakest normally. But anyway guys, I hope you found that interesting. I've kept it a bit more broad, just kind of as general lessons. But in the future, I may do kind of more specific technical breakdowns on certain positions and moves that I wish I kind of knew a few answers to back in the day, kind of technical concepts. So if you'd like a talk on that, make sure you like the video. So I'm going to chill out now for a bit and I'll see you at my next workout.
the two of the day, did 10 rounds total. So I kind of did three warming up on the tennis ball, on the string thing. I have no idea what you call that. But just kind of getting my feet going, getting my hands going, getting my eyes going, getting my head movement going really, having to play about there. Then I did a round of shadow boxing, a round of stretching, and then five rounds on the bag. On the bag I just showed practicing some kicks and some combination punching. So it's about to hit six o'clock and Cage Warriors is about to start. I know a few people fighting on it and there's a few other matches that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna chuck that on and get cooking so I'll show you my dinner. So here's dinner, we've got some basmati rice, some sirloin steak, and a mixture of veggies. So we've got fine asparagus, curly kale, red pepper, red onion. Gonna bash some hot sauce on that and a little bit of mayo too. And dessert is going to be some strawberries, some Greek yogurt, and some honey. And here's the cat. He loves rolling. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get through that food and enjoy the fight. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.